Hello and welcome to Ancient History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today I am joined with two very special guests. I have Joshua J. Mark, who is a writer and editor at Ancient History Encyclopedia, and Daniel Voschaft, who is a cinematographer and a virtual reality designer. Daniel has reconstructed the faces of 54 Roman emperors and today we're going to have a chat to him about everything that included. Don't forget if you enjoy this video, chuck it a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Um, so, Daniel, why did you do this? <laughs> why did you decide to reconstruct every head? <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, the main reason was that I was uh, unemployed. So I uh, worked on a show called Star Trek and I was working on, uh, I was about to start into the following season when all the production got paused. And so I was, uh, yeah, just had a lot of free time. And when I have free time, I'm usually just doing learning software. I was testing the uh, a software called Art Breeder and how I might be able to use it for uh, forensic facial reconstructions, which sounds fancy, but is actually not too terribly scientific. It's when you get like a skull and you try to apply like a, like a face to it. So I was doing tests on clay sculptures and seeing whether or not I could convert that. Uh, I released an article on that, and then I moved on to Roman emperors as, a, as I got a new start date, and I had about, uh, what was it, I think six weeks of uh, free time. Awesome. And, yeah. So why did you choose Roman emperors? Out of everything you could have chosen in the world to reconstruct, why this group of people? Uh, I think there's just so much uh, research around it already. I mean, there's like a wealth of knowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in a sense, a lot of the research was done for me. So uh, mm -hmm. like I was able to find uh, like a handful of resources that had most the information about like hair, skin tone. In most cases there was none, but uh, uh, where there was information, it was compiled together. Um, and yeah, there's just like a lot of photos online. There's a lot of uh, interest, and yeah, it just seemed like a good uh, a good topic. There's there's also a, a large subreddit community called Colorized Statues, which had been like toying with this and submitting different things. And there would be maybe like one post a week, and I just figured I'll just do a whole a whole slew of them. Awesome. That's so cool. And I was reading because you've got um, your website up and you've got an article and you've talked a lot about your process and what you've done. And I saw you came in with pretty much no idea about any of these people before you came in. Um, did did any of them sort of surprise you when you made this head? Did you go, oh, that's I wasn't expecting him to look like that or anything like that? Um, for sure. I mean, I'd say like there's sort of two that were really surprising. I guess Maximinus Thrax, uh, there's a lot of uh, lore, maybe exaggeration around him and his height. I think it was like eight feet tall and it could crush stones with his hands. Um, and then I think the other more interesting one was, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Elagabalus. Um, he's the emperor who, in I guess the early part of, uh, their life uh, identified male or was definitely depicted as male. And then like, it seemed like maybe in the year, year or two before uh, they were killed and also they were extremely young. Uh, yeah. I identified as a woman and uh, wow. there's a lot of very uh, contentious stories about, uh, you know, visiting the brothel and, uh, dressing uh, in women's clothes and just, yeah, I mean, parts of history that you don't learn in the like half course of civics that everyone's forced <laughs> to learn. Mm. Well, Josh, as someone who knows a lot about the Roman emperors and Rome history, did any of them surprise you or do some of them look exactly what you would, you would expect from seeing the busts? I would say exactly. I mean, there are a number of them. It was like, it was just absolutely fantastic, Daniel. Seriously, you know, um, Augustus Caesar, for example, just to you know, go with one. You know, we have uh, letters from um, 
from Mark Antony to to Augustus, where essentially the the uh, the overriding theme is, man, would you just lighten up? You got to like calm down. You know, you're gonna have an aneurysm, and, and your reconfiguration of Augustus is just exactly that thing. But I would say probably my favorite, and it's it's interesting that you that you mention him, is uh, Maximinus Thrax. Because he was a Germanic, uh, he was one of the barracks emperors, so-called, of the um, of the crisis of the uh, of the third century, uh, two thirty-five to two eighty-four CE, and and the way that you've um, the way that the way you rendered his his facial expression is this wonderful look of surprise, and I always felt that with Maximinus, where it's like, like really, I'm the emperor now. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I love Maximinus. Your, your image of Maximinus Thrax is just like one of my favorites. But also, Caligula, who always gets a bad rap in, in Roman history. And uh, one of the most famous stories of him is that he um, made one of, made a horse, uh, a member of the Senate. All right. Well, the way the way you have his facial expression, his whole vibe, the way that you presented him, is exactly that kind of I don't know what I'd say. Smart Alec, I suppose. Because I don't believe that Caligula actually was insane when he made his horse a member of the Senate. I think it was like, you guys are so useless. My horse could do a better job than you. And so here you go. And and his expression, the way you read his expression is just perfect with that. It's, it's just fantastic. Thanks. I mean, uh, Caligula actually went through a few changes. So uh, I never know what, if you're referring to uh, version one Caligula or uh, version three, but it, he sort of progressively went from sort of what what I was aiming for, sort of this like thousand yard stare, but uh, but also people kept telling me he was uh, uh, attractive, and uh, other people were telling me no, he's supposed to be disfigured. So in uh, after after being shown, I think like four busts. Uh, made contemporary, where they all had the same, I think it was his right eye lower than his left eye. Uh, I'm like, okay, maybe it wasn't just politicians saying he was dis disfigured. Maybe maybe this is a an actual thing. So the later depiction, he's actually got this sort of asymmetrical face and in a, in one of them, like a bit of a stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still trying to... I was going to say, it's interesting that you say that because you've written in one of your little, art, uh, in your article that um, there was a chance that you thought that the Roman emperors were depicting themselves more heroic than they actually were during their lives. Um, for example, Cleopatra the Seventh people are now thinking that she's this beautiful figure, whereas we look at busts and coins and she's not actually, she doesn't look as what we would say is stereotypically beautiful. Is that the same kind of thing now that you've seen with this droopy eye? Maybe they're not showing themselves as, as heroic and... Um, I think it. I think it really depends on uh, the the artistry and maybe like how far away the artist lives from the emperor. Like, what what are the chances of me being murdered? Uh, but this is me just sort of speculating a lot because I uh, I, th I think I was reading um, I was reading a historian about Caesar because I'm working on a Caesar depiction and they seem to have like a pretty good idea of like where the bust was made and uh, like. Uh, and speculating whether or not they actually had access to um, to the emperors themselves. So, I mean, I wonder how much of it is like banana phone. Like, is it a drawing that gets passed to a sculptor? Does the sculptor get like two hours with the emperor? Like, these questions are sort of open questions to me. I have no idea. But uh, no, no, you're I, absolutely right about that. Right. Yes. Exactly. I mean, a lot of these things came from. Um, uh, this document called the Historia Augusta, which, which is the the history of the Roman emperors, and it's it's largely considered now to be fictional. People uh, thought, well, you know, this guy was a nice guy, this guy was not a nice guy. Written long after they were done, but uh, people then would would sculpt images based upon the narrative. So you're absolutely right with that, yeah. Yeah, and also uh, I think like there's. A degree of uncertainty just because it's like we know the coins for sure because it's written on the coins with the name but like i don't know how many of the busts were inscribed i i saw it a, a few times in the description of the image maybe it was on wikimedia 
uh, Wikimedia Commons. It said like this bust is inscribed. Um, I don't know if that was like maybe it was inscribed a few hundred years later, or you know, was it inscribed when it came out of the ground and quickly? We need to, you know, say it Caesar right now because it's going to be worth. <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, some of them were like uh, uh, like Vitellius. There was like pseudo Vitellius, like very like the one in the Louvre. The, the I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of gray area, and I think like where some historians have been, uh, you know, a little bit angry at me is that I've sort of added a little bit too much certainty into these uh, uncertain busts. But on my on my website, I try to be very clear about. You know, this person, we did know his hair color or we didn't know his hair color. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we did know uh, where they were born or where, or we don't know. So I was trying to be clear about what I did and didn't know. And overall, it's impossible to make everybody happy, no matter how much evidence you've got. There's a, mm -hmm. someone is going to be unhappy with some facet of some part of a project, no matter, no matter what, I'm sure. <laughs> no, um, brilliant about about your project and, and and what's brilliant about your images I, it's exactly what kelly is saying like someone is always going to have a problem with some some artistic rendering but what impressed me the most was the expressions you know i mean when you look at caligula he looks like someone who's going to say you know what i want to make my horse a senator and augustus he is renowned, renowned in all of the ancient documents, especially with the you know, letters you know, to him from uh, Mark Antony. I'm a guy who could not take a joke. He could not take a joke, like not in any way. And the way that you have read him is like, you look at that face like, yeah, that's a guy that could not take a joke. Yep. And I think uh, uh, some of that has to do with just, uh, I was uh, like, whenever like bags started to appear under their eye, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna keep that. Or if, <laughs> you know, if their expression became extra stern. And I was also aiming to have like, cause there's quite a few in a row to make sure that their expression changed from one to the next or have like some sort of differentiation. Uh, because someone told me that like uh, the emperors were always trying to sort of compare themselves to, to agree to the previous emperor. So that the, 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 as the reigns changed, they'd be like, there's a degree of familiarity and it sort of explains like, uh, I think, you know, one emperor had a beard, you know, the next emperor, I want an even bigger beard or an even larger beard. And so there was sort of these themes. And what I especially made, uh, uh, paid attention to in the second version was to make sure that there, whatever changes I could have to have those from uh, one image to the next. Pretty cool. Did you have any any instances where you had like a couple of different busts or you had a bust and some written evidence that just didn't match up? Like you tried to put them together and it just didn't seem to work? Um, I can't recall it off the top of my head, but there were several, uh, there were definitely several busts where um, it was very uncertain. Uh, I think it was, uh, um, Aurelian, Aurelian was very difficult because I think it was like, there was this like bronze bust of Claudius Gothicus, which and like so many of these emperor or like image images, uh, would lose their sourcing. You know, someone would post it to Pinterest and then Pinterest is just sort of this echo chamber of poor citations. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. It's really interesting that you should bring up Aurelian and the problem that you had with him, because I actually thought Aurelian was one of your best things. And also his wife, Lupina Serena, which almost nobody ever addresses, but you know, she is thought to be the only woman that, that ruled over the Roman Empire. I mean, Aurelian draws the empire back from the split of the, the three empires of the Palmyrene Empire and the Gallic Empire. And then Opina Severina is 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 the woman who keeps it going after after he's dead. But I always thought I always thought, and this is entirely my own personal thing, that Aurelian is absolutely one of the most impressive of the emperors of the uh, Christ of the third century. 
And the way you rendered him, I thought just really reflects the kind of character that I always thought he had. So you, hey, bravo on that. That's really interesting. I mean, so uh, Bill Pia was very, uh, very much speculative. Of course, there's only coin portraits. Right. Um, and so I, as a starting point, I actually used Aurelian um, and gender shifted Aurelian as sort of the, the, the basis point, just uh, under like, I don't know, a very non-scientific people are, you know, find partners that look like themselves. I figured out, oh, I might as well take that to the, the extreme. But, uh, oh, fantastic. but I also put a lot of attention on him and her just because to me, they were the more obscure emperors. Um, it actually would depend which week I visited the, the Wikipedia page of a uh, of list of Roman emperors of whether or not she was scrubbed or not. Right. Ooh, really? right now, right now, I think if you go to like the Spanish uh, version of list of Roman emperors, you know, not there, you can go through the edits and you can see people arguing. Yes, she was. No, she wasn't. Um, and I was like, no, she definitely has to be in there. Um, oh, yeah. Very worked up over her. Very, very worked up. Yes. And in making this, I assumed I would land into obscurity. And so uh, I was like, well, if anything, someone is going to look up her name. You know, what does she look like? And they'll have to land on my depiction because no one else is like, <laughs> right. no one else is tied. Brilliant. <laughs> that was like, yeah. But it was also like a bit, uh, yeah, a bit daunting because I was like, I, I got to, I've got to, it's got to match a certain grid. That I, it has to be, you know, it's got to be 54. Like, oh gosh, what have, I, what have I done? And like pretty much all the projects that I that I do, I sort of go through this uh, stage of like, it's really enjoyable, still enjoyable. And then like the last uh, last bit is grueling. And so if I, if I never reach the grueling part of a project, I, uh, I feel like, well, someone else would have done it. And I think that's what happens with like the 12 Caesars project is you have a lot of artists, they do the 12 Caesars and then they give up. So there's a lot of depictions of uh, Julius Caesar and the first 11 emperors. And you've started a project with no prior knowledge of Roman emperors, right? You've come into this with no information about it. Do you now find yourself just full of information about these, these 54 people? <laughs> I'd say I'm getting I'm more and more, uh, more and more. I, I think people confuse me as as an expert on the subject. I definitely, I mean, I guess I have to have like a pretty good knowledge of like, oh yeah, I know where that bust is, what museum which bust is in. But I guess that's a bit of a like fairly superficial knowledge about them. Like uh, I, I'm constantly surprised when I learn any fact about them. I mean, uh, yeah, I could tell you maybe, yeah, one thing about each, but there's like, there's whole narrative arcs. There's whole, um, yeah, I'm definitely learning more. People share a podcast with me on a certain emperor. I'll watch it. Be like, oh, cool. So I sort of get this, this sort of like, uh, get what, uh, historians are all, um, <laughs> obsessing over that. I mean, yeah, it really is. The more you look into it, you, the more you find these like stories that are rel relevant uh, to contemporary life or like, holy smokes, like we have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an American president who might think they're an emperor or something <laughs> and like has all the like uh, mental tics of, of, you know, uh, an emperor that would, you know, send, the citizenry into a coliseum to get who knows what. <laughs> it's I think because I was trying to keep uh, like uh, one thing that the software that I use does very well is sort of bring everything into like a back to it like a neutral face like puts the mouth back to where an average mouth would be eyes back to where an average eyes would be and so I was constantly working. Um, 
between the software and Photoshop to sort of bring back, you know, a certain smirk or a certain like furrow from of the brow that was sculpted, you know, in marble that you really can't, you can't achieve a lot of the emotion that are in this sculptures in the software. You can sort of trick it, but it's sort of like, it always kind of wants to push back into like a, a very um, like average face. Hard to describe. It's very, it's a, it's worth trying. Like it's worth trying, like finding like a good clear photo of a, of a bust and just trying it, throwing it in. It'll, it'll come in with errors. Their eyes will be all messed up. But if you mess around with the split sliders, you'll sort of get a sense of uh, um, what's needed to, to convert to convert one. It's pretty cool. And I, I saw a note, I think it was on one of your articles that said um, the idea of resurrecting these emperors in the 21st century. Did you think about that idea whilst you were working on these or were you just thinking, I'm just going to see how they look, see how it goes? Um, yeah, I mean, the, I think a lot of like news articles have used the word like resurrection and mm. I think I'm always very much like, okay, calm down <laughs> is like may, like I know some of the best might not even be right. And so the idea that I'm like, well, maybe I like resurrected some ran random Senator or like <laughs> I re resurrected what the emperor's brother might look like, or, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, try to be pretty modest about like, uh, if you use this as like a guidebook to the past, uh, and this is all you had to go off of, you know, you would end up in the wrong century, you know, <laughs> instead of finding Augustus, you might end up in like the Kremlin you know, <laughs> next to Vladimir Putin, you know, it, you, you want to use like more than just what I've done to, uh, guide yourself through, uh, through history. No, but with artistic renderings of any kind, there's always this tendency for people, especially scholars, to jump on this thing and say, like, this is what it is. Because mm -hmm. the historical narrative, I mean, human beings have a natural tendency or need to have a cohesive story. And so they see something like your work and they say, like, oh, that fits my narrative or it doesn't fit my narrative. And so it's either accepted or rejected. And this is unfortunate because I think the history is actually much more malleable. You know, it, it, it's much more fluid. Uh, and, and as new uh, information comes to light, different things are interpreted in different ways. But but people tend to stick to the narrative that they're used to because humans, by and large, hate change. Mm. And I can really understand how people would be like you know criticizing what you've done, saying like, oh well, that 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 can't be what Augustus looked like. Ah, Caligula didn't look like that. Or what's interesting is I've had like uh, I've had people sort of like really get attached to a previous depiction that I had wow. where like, I've sort of like mentally moved on. And I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, Nero, actually, I think he looks more like this. But I think everyone liked my first version of Nero <laughs> where he's got this like square jaw and he looked like a rugby player. And I was like, that, that was a, uh, you know, he, he had sort of these sideburns and what happened is the, uh, the software read his like sculpted marble sideburns as a jaw. I think maybe he had a bit more weight and, uh, you know, had less of a chin, less of a jaw, but, you know, I just got someone contacted me. They want to use uh, the previous Nero in a book. I was like, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to hide any of the previous ones. I think one of the worst things I could have done is like, uh, said this is version two and scrubbed from my website like all the previous versions and right. said, no mm -hmm. they're wrong I, but I left them in and then I always said like why I made the change and I think that's been taken uh, really well I think yeah, that was like brilliant. That, that is that's brilliant that, that's the thing with the fluidity of history the fluidity of interpretation you know so mm -hmm. it could have looked like this or it could have looked like that you know Either way. Yeah, and people can take my depictions and they can sort of like uh, run with that or they like, um, or I mean, it, it, it's like, it is a project. I called it the Roman Emperor Project. If someone sends me an email and they say, you are wrong, 
you're wrong because of this reason, you know, here's a historical text, you know, I'm reading that email and I'm going, you know what, you, you're, you're right. I think I have to like come out with version 2.2 <laughs> and, you know, so it's, it's cool. So hopefully, you know, if there's, I don't know how often we come across new texts from history, I gather it's quite rare. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, you have to like dig up a new city that's buried or something or find a, new, yeah. Yeah, find a new tablet or a new, right. um, but if there's new information, you mm. know, hopefully I'll get an email and someone just screaming at me and saying, you're wrong. <laughs> With like the textual sources you were using, did you look at multiple different translations of a single text to make sure that the depictions were the same? Because I, I know that translations can definitely be up to the translator's interpretation of, of words and phrases and stuff like that. Did you think about that at all whilst you were working on it? I definitely thought about it, but it was definitely a huge pitfall. It was, you know, I, I could see when people were uh, doing translations that there was sort of, I think the, one of the big words was like subflavum and like people's different interpretations of what that meant in terms of like skin tone or hair color. Right. And, you know, I, I don't know, I only speak English. I could only rely on um, certain translations and I felt into, you know, uh, actually using uh, the wrong translations on my first version. I think there were three emperors where someone had translated their hair as blonde, but it was like, it, uh, it, that site was completely unreliable. That's interesting because when I first reached out to Josh about potentially doing this interview with you, you said that one of them looked like someone you went to uni with. Yeah, you yeah, absolutely. Right. Actually, Caligula actually reminded me of a guy who then became an efficiency expert. And I thought, oh yes. An efficiency expert, that would be Caligula, you know, in an ironic sense, but you know, it could happen in some universe, right? Yeah, there was a professor who uh, reached out to me and they said that they looked like uh, Numerian. And so my, I actually, uh, he sent me a photo from like the same lighting and angle that I had originally rendered him and it's like, definitely looks like uh, like brother or cousin area and I was like can I use your image in the next version and so just almost for kicks like I was able to like enhance that portrait by mixing in because you can get more like detail about skin tone and like uh uh like sort of realism when you add a real image into it but it's hard to find uh you know a good match but it was like perfect and I was like can I include it yep so in the second version, there's a yeah a professor mixed into Numerian. I think that's one of those most fantastic things about it is what you're saying is that people are saying, oh yeah, this is my neighbor, this is the garbage man, this is this guy that like stole money. It's like you know people think of the ancient past as is completely different from today. These people had nothing to do with us. Ah, oh, they were all so primitive. They did these crazy things. There was no difference between us and them. I mean, it's, it's a level of technology is the only thing that separates us. But as far as the the essential humanness, you know, the human condition hasn't changed at all. And I think it, that's one of the things that impressed me the most about your work is like, yeah, these people are very recognizable. I mean, they do look like your garbage man, your neighbor and your brother and your cousin, you know? I was gonna say, Josh, yeah. you found the original article and you're the one who, who emailed it to us. Where did you, where did that come from? Where'd you stumble on that? Yeah, I, I came across it on, on uh, MSNBC. And it was just, it was brilliant. And they had a link to your to your images, Daniel. And uh, and then when I saw the images, that was the whole thing where then I wrote to Kelly's. I, I couldn't stop looking at them for about a half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour perhaps. It was that, yeah, I know that guy. Oh yeah, that guy's a used car salesman. Oh, it looks just like the guy I always imagine. Next in the sack. Oh, that look of surprise. So, you know, I instantly wrote Jan uh, Vandekrab and the, you know, our CEO at AHE. And, and Kelly and said, "Yeah, maybe we should we should look into this as as, uh, as something that we should explore because it was just something that it just seemed like so exciting. Like I should say, like I found it like so incredibly exciting. It was just instantly I wanted to share it with everybody that I knew. I wanted to say like 
mass email all the way across. It was just <laughs> your work was really, really, it is really, really impressive. It was like it was it was great. And I gotta say that uh, shout out to your website. Came across it multiple times in my research, and it was always good to to have like a reliable source um, and like proper citations to uh, yeah Roman Emperor faces. It was great. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for joining this. This was awesome. Really great. Yeah. I'm glad it worked out so well. Thank you so much for joining us. It was thank fantastic. You. Thank you so much to both Josh and Daniel for joining me today and chatting all about Roman emperors and Daniel's reconstruction. If you're interested in his work, I have linked his website down below. And if you'd like to purchase prints of the Roman emperors, I have popped the Etsy link down below. This video was brought to you by Ancient History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. Ancient History Encyclopedia is a not-for-profit organisation. If you'd like to support our work, hit the card up in the screen or via the link below. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.